number one Iron Age booty daddy. The East versus the West. That's nothing new when it comes to various different sorts of media going all the way back to the days between, you know, samurai films and westerns and then even so on into the 90s when I grew up with, uh, you know, Superman versus Goku and who would win. But lately the conversation has been changing as to asking the question, why is Eastern media, whether it be movies or manga or anime, having such a rise here in the West. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for tuning in. And if you guys like what I am doing here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and ring the notification bell for me. You see, Netflix recently announced that they were going to be committing $2.5 billion into Korean theater and Korean television shows. Now, this amidst the writer's strike that is going on currently here in America. You see, many writers out there are making demands such as higher pay and maintaining, if not increasing, the amount of writers that need to be held on staff for various different shows. We then also have the manga has climbed 9% this year alone, which is absolutely huge because it's saw gangbuster sales in the two years prior, leaving the Western comics in the dust. And then on top of it, viewership of anime has been increasing as well. I'm kind of case in point of that. I didn't really used to watch a whole lot of anime, but the Western media just seems to be lacking it for me lately, so I've been checking out a lot more anime. This is a really interesting concept is why are Western audiences moving over towards Eastern produced media? Well, I think ultimately one of the things that we can see really does come down to the storytelling, really does come down to a central value and a central core that a lot of the Eastern media has. You see, it's something that we're missing here in the West. And when we saw it start to leave, we kind of started to see a dip here in Western media. You see, a lot of Eastern media very much loves to focus on strong male characters, right? And not toxic male characters, but fathers, fatherhood, mentorship, and so on and so forth. We see heroes' journeys. We very much see absolutely explosive action in the form of anime and manga, and we see heartfelt stories from a lot of the Korean theater. I'm speaking from other people who I've checked out who watch quite a bit of Korean movies and television. Squid Game absolutely blew up several years ago and drew a lot of people in. In fact, a movie that was so large out there that people that I knew were watching it said it was great. I had to check it out myself, and that was Train to Busan. And I'm not even somewhat of a thriller or horror movie guy, and I freaking love Train to Busan. I thought that movie was fantastic. So why is it that amongst the writer's strike here, Netflix, who supposedly has come out and said, oh, well, you know, writers and, you know, we, we, yeah, yeah, back to fight to power, back to power, which people are calling this the Netflix strike. Why has Netflix decided to dedicate $2.5 billion into Korean media? Why is it that anime and manga are still rising? And ultimately, I do believe it comes down to the stories, the storytelling. You see, here in the West, a lot of television shows and cartoons and stuff like that out there don't really have a message that I really want my kids seeing, especially with some of the more, oh, I guess, sexual language that has been introduced lately. But when I go over and I can wade through a lot of the anime that's out there, some of it's not good for children, but some of it is. Some of it's good heartfelt stories. For instance, Dragon Ball Super. A more modern take on a show that I watched when I was a kid and still love to this day. I mean, I got my Vegeta right there. Demon Slayer. A story of hope, human compassion, kindness, and perseverance. Stories like My Hero Academia, which, although they do get into some of the language, you know, you got to take your wins with your losses. But My Hero Academia, a story of never giving up, coming together, the ideals of community, friendship, and so on. Over to Train to Busan. 
Overall, it's a story of fatherhood, absent fatherhood, reconnecting with your child, and going the distance for those that you love. Overall, I think this is why we're seeing Netflix and just overall Western audiences start to abandon, or start to, I'm sorry, start to abandon the Western stories and go for the more traditional Eastern stories, because they do still hold those what seem to be universal human values. Never giving up in the face of fear, perseverance, kindness, caring towards other people, and ultimately, fantastic storytelling, as is a lot of these. So, my question out of all of this, with the writer's strike going on and seemingly not going towards the direction of the writers right now, do you guys think that Eastern media is going to keep growing here in the West? Do you think that Eastern media has any of these true human values and traits that I mentioned? Or do you think that, well, it's just a fad, it's going to fade with time, and as soon as the writers get back in the room, Western audiences are going to flock back to the Netflixes and the Disneys and things like that. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I find this very interesting because, again, the East versus West has been a conversation for many, many, many years. And it is changing. And it does seem that the Eastern stuff is definitely getting a hold. So, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And never forget, I dedicate a special live stream to all of you. It's called Sunday Coffee. It's where I go and I read all of your comments that are on my channel. It's at 11 a.m. Central every single Sunday as is the name, Sunday Coffee. So join me there. We'll have a cup of coffee together. And until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow, and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below to join my Gilded server and my adrinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm also over on Rumble as well. So click that link while you're down there. See you next time.